the National Education Policy 2020 is ushering the transformational reforms. PM Schools for Rising India, PM Sri, are delivering quality teaching and nurturing holistic and well-rounded individuals. The Skill India mission has trained 1.4 crore youth, upskilled and reskilled 54 lakh youth, and established 3,000 new ITIs. A large number of institutions of higher learning, namely seven IITs, 16 triple ITs, seven IAMs, 15 AIMS, and 390 universities have been set up. PM Mudra Yojana has sanctioned 43 crore loans, aggregating to 22.5 lakh crores of rupees for entrepreneurial aspirations of our youth. Besides that, Fund of Funds, Startup India, and Startup Credit Guarantee Schemes are assisting our youth. They are also becoming Rosgar Data. The country is proud of our youth scaling new heights in sports. The highest ever medal tally in Asian Games and Asian Para Games in 2023 reflects a high confidence level. Chess prod prodigy and our number one ranked player Pragnananda put up a stiff fight against the reigning world champion Magnus Carlsen in 2023. Today, India has over 80 chess grandmasters compared to little over 20 in 2010. Momentum for Nari Shakti, the empowerment of women through entrepreneurship, ease of living and dignity for them has gained momentum in these 10 years. 30 crore mudra yojana loans have been given to women entrepreneurs. Female enrollment in higher education has gone up by 28% in 10 years. In STEM courses, girls and women constitute 43% of enrollment, one of the highest in the world. All these measures are getting reflected in the increasing participation of women in workforce. Making triple talaq illegal, reservation of one-third seats for women in the Lok Sabha and state assemblies, and giving over 70% houses under PM Awaz Yojana in rural areas to women, and giving over 70% houses under PM Awaz Yojana in rural areas to women as sole or joint owners have enhanced their dignity. Exemplary track record of governance, development and performance. Besides delivering on high growth in terms of gross domestic product, the government is equally focused on a more comprehensive GDP, that is governance, development and performance. Our government has provided transparent, accountable, people-centric and prompt trust-based administration with citizen-first and minimum government, maximum governance approach. The impact of all-round development is discernible in all sectors. There is macroeconomic stability, including in the external sector. Investments are robust. The economy is doing well. People are living better and earning better, with greater, even greater aspirations for future. Average real income of the people has increased by 50 percent. Inflation is moderate. People are getting empowered, equipped and enabled to pursue their aspirations. There is effective and timely delivery of programs 
and of large projects. Economic management. The multi-pronged economic management over the past 10 years has complemented people-centric, inclusive development, following are some of the major elements. One, all forms of infrastructure, physical, digital, or social, are being built in record time. All, number two, all parts of the country are becoming active participants in economic growth. Number three, digital public infrastructure, a new factor of production as it in the 21st century, is instrumental in formalization of the economy. Number four, goods and services tax has enabled one nation, one market, one tax. Tax reforms have led to deepening and widening of tax base. Number five, strengthening of the financial sector has helped in making savings, credit, and investments more efficient. Number six, GIFT, IFSC, and the Unified Regulatory Authority, IFSCA, are creating a robust gateway for global capital and financial services for the economy. Number seven, proactive inflation management has helped keep inflation within the policy band. Now, the global context, Honorable Speaker, sir. Geopolitically, global affairs are becoming more complex and challenging with wars and conflicts. Globalization is being redefined with reshoring and friendshoring, disruption and fragmentation of supply chains and competition for critical minerals and technologies. A new world order is emerging after the COVID pandemic. India assumed the G20 presidency during very difficult times for the world. The global economy was going through high inflation, high interest rates, low growth, very high public debt, low trade growth, and climate changes. The pandemic has led to a crisis of food, fertilizer, fuel, and finances for the world, while India successfully navigated its way 